Last Orgy of the Divine Hermit by Mark Lehner. Introduction. E F P T O Z L P E D P E C F D E D F C Z P F E L O P Z D D E F P O T E C L E F O D P C T F D P L T C E O P E Z O L C F T D Patient, looking through the phoropter lenses and reading from the eye chart. The first orgasm I ever had was so intense I separated both my shoulders and shit in my pants. So begins last orgy of the Divine Hermit. The optometrist switches lenses on the phoropter. Optometrist. Is this any better? Sharper? Patient. Oh my god, I wasn't even close. Optometrist. That's okay. Can you read it for me now? The patient absently twirls a lock of hair around her finger as she reads through the device, which completely masks her face. Patient. On June 26th, 2035, Kermunkachunk, the capital of Chalasia, was engulfed in chaos. The Chalasian Mafia Faction, a fanatical offshoot of the Chalasian Children's Theater, had assumed control of the city center and was carrying out mass executions. Enemies, real and especially imagined, were dragged out of their office buildings and gutted in the street. So begins last orgy of the Divine Hermit. Optometrist. Excellent. Now, this makes it blurry, yes? Patient. Yes. Optometrist, is it better like this? Or like this? One or two? <laughs> Patient, about the same. Optometrist, okay, now can you read this? Patient. So begins last orgy of the Divine Hermit, in which a father and his daughter, in Chalasia researching an ethnography of the unique criminal subculture of the Chalasian Mafia faction, spend a night at the bar Pulpa, Kermunkachunk's number one spoken word karaoke bar, where seemingly extemporaneous conversations are, in actuality, being read from multiple karaoke screens arrayed around the bar room. Moreover, it's Thursday, father-daughter night, when the bar is frequented by actual fathers and daughters, as well as couples role-playing fathers and daughters. Optometrist. Good. Now, can you make any, can you make out any of this line? I know it's small. Patient. Not really, I'm guessing here. Uh, Fnexa Alsdfi. Hoyten, Urs, Dinf, Bemolf, Vuzivk, Nekutnb, Exinkg. I'm not really sure. Optometrist. All right, give me just a moment here. He makes a quick note on the patient's chart and again switches lenses on the phoropter. Optometrist. How about now? Can you make out anything? Patient. Meanwhile, outside on the piazza, sub-factions of the Chalasian Mafia faction vie for supremacy in a never-ending frenzy of stomach-churning savagery. Chalasian Mafia faction street soldiers commit acts of unimaginable sadism, reveling in carnage and the grotesque mutilation of their victims' corpses. But it's worth keeping in mind that these are kids who several years ago, frequently only several weeks ago, several days ago in some cases, we're prancing around on stage in a Chalasian children's theater production of Clever Jack and the Magic Beanstalk. These are young people who've traded their exuberant devotion to musical theater for an irrepressible desire to kill and be killed on, on the piazza. Histrionic narcissists to the core. Chalasian mafia faction street soldiers pirouette as they die. 
like defecating dogs aligning themselves to the Earth's electromagnetic field. These ex-musical theater kids are always on, always performing for the CCTV cameras that ring the perimeter of the piazza. The Chilesian Mafia faction, we're told, is like a combination of the Gambino crime family and the Khmer Rouge, proclaiming itself to be against everything and everyone. It is necessarily, per its own ethos, riven by internecine conflict, hence this chaotic, blood-drenched phantasmagoria, this unspeakable orgy of violence that ensues without respite, day in and day out, on the piazza outside the bar Polpo, Kermunka Chunk's number one spoken word karaoke bar, optometrist. Now, you're seeing two columns of text side by side, yes? Patient, yes. Optometrist. Okay, let me know when they've merged into one column. Patient. Uh, now. Optometrist. Good. Now, can you read that for me or is it too blurry? Patient. No, I can read it. Meanwhile, outside on the piazza, sub-factions of the Chilesian Mafia faction buy for supremacy in a never-ending frenzy of stomach-churning savagery. Chilesian Mafia faction street soldiers commit acts of unimaginable sadism, reveling in carnage and the grotesque mutilation of their victims' corpses. But it's worth keeping in mind that these are kids who several years ago, frequently only several weeks ago, several days ago in some cases, we're prancing around on stage in a Chilesian children's theater production of Clever Jack and the Magic Beanstalk. These are young people who've traded their exuberant devotion to musical theater for an irrepressible desire to kill and be killed out on the piazza. Histrionic narcissists to the core. Chilesian mafia faction street soldiers pirouette as they die. Like defecating dogs aligning themselves to the Earth's electromagnetic field. <laughs> Fucking God. These ex-musical theater kids are always on, always performing for the CCTV cameras that ring the perimeter of the piazza. The Chilesian Mafia faction, we're told, is like a combination of the Gambino crime family and the Khmer Rouge, proclaiming itself to be against everything and everyone. It is necessarily, per its own ethos, riven by internecine conflict, hence this chaotic blood-drenched phantasmagoria, this unspeakable orgy of violence that ensues without respite, day in and day out, on the piazza outside the bar pulpo. Kermunka Chunk's number one spoken word, karaoke bar. The patient stopped reading. Patient. Keep going. Optometrist. Please. Patient. Chilesia is a tiny country wedged between Moldova and Romania, though recognized by neither. Almost every surface in Chilesia, actually every surface, tests positive for traces of cocaine. The entirety of the country is cordoned off with yellow crime scene tape. All 148 kilometers of border. A phenomenon visible from outer space. In actuality, a Neolithic geoglyph akin to the Kazakh steppe earthworks, or the more recent Nazca lines, this cordon was made by removing the top layer of the bluish-white reflecting salt flats that once covered all of Chilesia to reveal a bright yellow subsoil. An elaborate system of sewers, now in complete disuse, descends some 1,800 kilometers beneath the ground, ramifying across the subterranean latitudes of the entire planet a feat of an engineering that many believe could only have been achieved by corrupt ancient aliens. Even in 800 BC, the Chilesian construction and waste carting industries were rife with racketeering. These ancient sewers make Chilesia both the farthest and the nearest destination from any point of origin on Earth. In other words, at any given moment, Chilesia may be wedged between any two other nations. Fossilized ancient Chilesian shit, coprolites, 
can today be found almost anywhere. Anywhere, actually. And everywhere. Apropos of which, a previous incarnation of the Bar Pulpa was called the Copra Cabana, which was obviously not a spoken word karaoke bar. The Chilesian Joy de Merde is only surpassed by its Joy de Guerre. But could this violence, this atrocious, unabating carnage be as random and incoherent as it appears? Is there someone responsible for orchestrating the perpetual conflagration on the piazza outside the bar pulpa? The piazza, with its stench of sweat, lube, and gasoline littered with shell casings, cigarette butts, and used condoms floating in puddles of blood? These jams are pretty tasty. Perhaps it's the divine hermits themselves, those heretical holy men who are the real puppet masters, the ones calling the shots on the brazen predation that's come to define contemporary Kermankachunk. Like Kabbalistic sadics, or Sheva Tantricus, but historically associated with the Chilesian Mafia faction. These antinomian mystics, moonlighting as Mafia warlords, combine the esoteric pursuit of non-dualistic illumination with extortion and loan sharking. Last orgy of the Divine Hermit makes a strong case that it's these eponymous individuals who are masterminding events on the piazza from their perch in the floating casino on Lake Little Lake where these racketeering Illuminati who wear their diamond-encrusted hairballs and engraved prostates around their necks as amulets, these shirtless recluses with their white chest hair and neon orange nylon sweatpants, paradoxically socialize every Thursday night. Made members and frequently godfathers of the Chilesian Mafia faction these adepts remain literally above the fray, levitating a foot or two above their seats as they play a traditional Chilesian game that combines Scrabble and Mahjong. They roll their eyes at the suggestion that they have anything to do with the violence on the piazza, let alone directed as seemingly in a trance. They endlessly shuffle their tiles. This is known as, quote, permutation of the letters, end of quote. And they send deeply encrypted death threats to anyone with the temerity to suggest that they encrypt their death threats. The Chilesian Mafia faction warlord and the divine hermit embody, frequently within the same individual, two complementary modalities. Criminality and devequit, cleaving to the divine encapsulating within this single chimerical figure the Chilesian concept of human existence. As for the CMF street soldiers themselves, when it comes to fashioning weapons, they are remarkably resourceful and have been known to make shanks out of soft-serve ice cream. The men's room in the bar pulpo is an insane parody of the ladies' room. It is haunted by the anthropoid ghosts of the ancient aliens, the Kermunks, who built the vast labyrinthine sewer system. In this particular men's room, in any men's room actually, we encounter, quote, misshapen forms of the gods in agony, end of quote. This men's room is, in a sense, like an incubator where the larval divine hermits molt and mature, sheltered from pred predators, and fed by the mechanomorphic vermin that scurry behind the toilets. It is this men's room from which, in a sense, they migrate on deciduous wings of the floating casino. 
And it is, it is where, at the end of his life, the divine hermit instinctively returns, where he and his demonic double, the mafia warlord, are locked in a reciprocal interrogation in a mirror above the sink, quote, the mirror from which there is no escape, end of quote. It is where Ron Howard looks in the mirror and sees Clint Howard. 60 years ago on an episode of Bonanza, Clint Howard in blackface played a little African boy who brings the Ebola virus to the Ponderosa, sparking two consecutive three-day weekends of deadly pogroms that eventually became known as the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. <laughs> Optometrist. Close enough. He changes lenses on the ferropter. Optometrist. Now, can you make out any of this? Patient. Squinting through the ferropter. Some. Optometrist. Give it a try. Patient. And the Chilesian joie de guerre is only surpassed by its joie de lire. Among the most literate people on earth, Chilesians almost never read in solitude or silence, only publicly and out loud, quote, belting, end of quote, either from the spoken word karaoke screens or swaying back and forth from the big character posters that festoon the perimeter of the piazza. And whereas these collective performances are widely referred to as orgiastic and more cosmopolitan Kermunkachunkians, Kermunk the Kermunke Chunky and Cognoscenti, the most zealous of whom are, of course, the street soldiers of the CMF, go one step further, stigmatizing solitary reading as, quote, prurient and petite bourgeois, end of quote, i.e. a mortal sin akin to eating your own earwax. I'm sorry, one's own earwax. Optometrist. Excellent. Patient. When, at the beginning of last orgy of the Divine Hermit, the door to the bar pulpo opens on father-daughter night, the babble, which to an untutored ear wouldn't sound much different from the ambient hubbub of any bar, includes the drunken voices of an anthropologist and his daughter, Gabby, a gorgeous young neostructural filmmaker from New York, who are in Kermunkachunk, researching an ethnography about the ultra-violent Chilesian mafia faction. The two of them seated in a booth across from each other and reading aloud, along with everyone else, from the numerous spoken word karaoke screens, Chilesia's most beloved folktale, which is sometimes palindromically called Night of the Daughter's Father. <laughs> 